All right. First and foremost, I want to start off by saying, Brockathea Hawa, Brockathea Hawa Shai, Brockathea Hawa, Brockathea Hawa Shai, Brockathea Hawa, Brockathea Hawa Shai, Call Hala Yahawa, Bashem Yahawa Shai, Bashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of GMS who rule well and who taught me this truth. And uh, Shalom to you, sincere Akiam, out there listening, learning, and pushing this truth. And uh, Shalom to the few sincere Akwath out there listening and learning as well. With that being said, I'm going to jump straight into this video. I don't want to rot the Zah, it'll be edifying. As usual, I'm going to go in the uh, Rakah Kwadash. Um, it's going to be real quick, not going to be long at all. Um, I was just meditating something that, that I had mentioned in, uh, at camp yesterday. Um, but we've mentioned it before, we know about it. And this is the uh, second exit, the second exodus, okay, which we know um, it's going to be out of chiefly out of the second deliverance is going to chiefly be out of uh, America, Babylon the Great, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, okay. But um, as we know, uh, this go around only the elect is going to make it, man. Only the elect of Israel, all right. All of Israel is not going to make it out of this exodus. The first exodus, all of Israel made it out. But all of Israel did not make it to the kingdom, okay? Most of them, a majority died off, not even Moses. You know, a lot of them died off in the wilderness, you know? You know, so, hey, in this exodus, only the elect, the elect of Israel are, are, is going to make it. The rest are going to experience death by pain, and they're going to be reborn in the kingdom as newborn babes. They're going to be shamefaced, all right? And that's pretty much the point of this. I don't want to make it too long. So let's uh, let's bang these scriptures out and I and I close out. So this is Second Ezra nine, and I'll start at five. Second Ezra nine and five, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the and the end is manifest. And we know we're at the times of the end. The end of what Esau Edom's empire, his wicked rulership. Okay, you know. It's, uh, so it says, uh, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved, and that's what we're looking, we're looking to be delivered. We're looking to be saved out of this hell that's about to befall this earth, chiefly the second death, thermonuclear destruction. And we're only gonna get we're only gonna be able to escape if we get beamed up into them chariots, man. You know? So that's why we gotta give diligence. That hedge gotta be around it even before the chariots. To, to enable to be able to endure all the the plagues that are about to be unleashed on the earth the spirit of Yahweh Shai is going to have to be around you that the wa exempt from judgment them angels are going to have to be encamped around you so in order to, to have that you're going to have to give diligence you're going to have to have faith plus works you see you see verse 7 uh, verse 6 even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonderful and powerful works and endings and effects and signs, and we're seeing them signs. We the prophecies are screaming, earthquakes, storms, um, sedition, you know, everything the Lord warned us about, and it's going to only intensify the closer and closer we get. And everyone that shall be saved, because we're not yet saved, we are yet to stay in captivity, you know. It says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith, because faith plus works. Faith without works is dead. That's the only way you're going to be able to escape, is by your faith plus your works. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, and by faith whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils. Yeah, evil times, bad times are on the horizons, man. A time like never before, per Daniel 12 and 1. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. That's the second exodus. But only a remnant, only the elect is going to make it. Okay? It's going to tell you what's going to happen to the two-thirds, the unbelievers, the unfaithful. All right? In verse 9. Um... And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them from the beginning, the first fruits. This thing is about predestination. Okay, none of us know, but that a hey, Lord's will, we are of that number. That's why we give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Many are called, few are chosen. We're looking to be chosen. 
but we're not going to know until that day, okay? That's why we keep pushing. That's why we go hard. So it says, then shall, this is the two-thirds, the ones of you that, it's going to explain it. This is the two-thirds, the unbelievers, okay? I beg to say the majority of Israel, okay? The masses of Israel is going to experience this because they refuse to repent. Just like in the first exodus, the, the masses were killed off, okay? So it says, then shall they be in a pitiful case, which have now abused my ways. And that's the two-thirds, man. They're wallowing in their sins. They're fanning their hand at the truth. They're pushing Yahweh Shai's hand away, you know, because his arm is stretched out. It's not short that he cannot save, but they don't want, they don't want to be saved. They don't, think they, they don't think they need to be saved from anything. They don't see the, the, the storm on the horizon. They don't, they don't, they don't have, Salakia, they don't have anything, any idea of what's on the horizon. They're, they're, hey, as it says, gross darkness, man, you know, cover the people. It says, then shall they be in a pitiful case, because yeah, it's going to be nasty, man. It's going to be nasty, it's going to be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth, you know. Hey, but we're not going to, we're not going to feel sorry for you, because you had time, and you misused the prophets. You, you, you misused, you misused the Lord. Your liberty, your grace, you, hey, you, you fanned your hand at it. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay? It says, Then shall they be in a pitiful case which have now abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully. Yeah, you don't want to obey the dietary laws. You don't want to keep the high holy days. You don't want to call upon his name. You don't want to even believe that's his name. You see? You see? You just want to do your own thing. You want to lean upon your own understanding. You see? Then shall they be in a pitiful case which have now which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Yet yeah, a gift destroyeth the heart. Who the Lord loveth he chasteneth. Some of the, some of these people are not in trouble as other men, you know? They the Lord ain't jacking them up so they don't remember the Lord. But they're going to remember the Lord when all that hell is put upon them. Then they're going to want to seek the Lord early in their affliction. But they're not going to find the Lord. And he's going to mock you, man. He's going to mock you. When your fear cometh as a desolation and a whirlwind, he's going to mock you. Okay? Because why you abused his ways. You misused, you misused the prophets. You, you scoffed at this truth. Okay? Then shall they be in a pitiful case which have now abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And that's why a lot of people are, are going to die, man, because they're going to want to seek to save their life. They, they got a good place in the society. They got a good job, good status. This so-called middle class, you know, upper, you know, upper echelon, you know, might be millionaires and shit, you know. And they're going to want to seek to save their life. But guess what? If you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. You see, if you, if you look to save your, your, your place in this society, you're going to lose it. You can't serve two masters. You're going you're gonna to hold, you're going to love one and hate the other. Okay. It says, and they that have loathed my law, hated the law, abhorred it, you know, while they had yet liberty because the doors of mercy are still open. It's drastically closing, but you still got time to get your household in order. To seek the Lord, to inquire, to pray, to fast, to put on as the elect. Still time. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened up unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, the hopeful elect. Okay, that Israel, really Yasharala, but at this point, the, the elect. Paul said, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Yahweh Shai said, I pray for them, not for the world. Okay, you know, because dying of mine, because the Lord gave them to them, the first fruits, the first spirits created, starting with 144,000 men, 12,000 men out of each tribe of Israel, Yasharala, and then the one third, the innumerable believers, men, women, and children. Okay. That's who's going to make it. That's who the world was created for, chiefly. Okay, the ones that are obedient, that are seeking the face of the Lord. Okay, you know, that are repentful, that are trying to put off that old man or that old woman, fighting the good fight of faith, pushing. Okay, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, 
and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. Okay, so um, I got a couple more, and I um, I read three more. I read three more. So this is um. Uh, Zechariah 13 and 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. And the, the, the chief sword of the Lord is Esau, Edom. All right? And then the ultimate sword is going to be the missiles, the nukes. All right? So it says, Awake, O sword. And that's what's happening. The enemy is about to come in like a flood. They're about to come in like madmen, sparing none. Okay? They're not going to regard silver, gold. They're not going to have any pity, man. Old, young, women. You know? Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, hey, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Shai. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's really talking about you false prophets, okay? Encouraging the Lord's people to take that, that jab, you know? Teaching lies, man. You know, removing the name of the Lord, you know? Taking that hedge away from them, all right? You know? But, hey, guess what? The Lord said the deceived and the deceiver are his. You know, if the blind uh, follow the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. You know, the Lord deceived that prophet, man. It is what it is. You know, that was your lot. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Shai. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's what's going to happen. A lot of these false prophets, a lot of these false teachers... You're, these leaders that you idolize and you worshiping because you want to follow men rather than follow your Shai, they're going to be pub they're going to have public deaths man grievous deaths and the, the, the congregation is going to scatter man they're going to scatter when they see the judgment that the lord puts upon these people man okay awake O sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow saith the lord of hosts yahabashim Shai. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass, this is the main point, that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And uh, like Elder Apostle Rimelah brought out, the two-thirds, this prophecy is talking about here in Babylon the Great. Because remember, Israel, Yasharala, were scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. But the prophecy of the two-thirds two getting cut off is chiefly talking about here in Babylon the Great, okay? All right, two-thirds of you Jakes here are going to die, man, grievous deaths. That's what you're reading. That's what you're hearing. Zechariah 13 and 8. Because like I said, in this second exodus from America, Babylon the Great, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, all of Israel ain't making it, man, out of Israel, out of Egypt, okay? You see? You see? And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord Jehovah, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third, the, the elect, right, shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And that's really what? The, talking about the nukes, obviously, right? The, the, the lake of fire, the thermonuclear destruction. But also the, this, this trial, this fiery trial, you know? The furnace of affliction, this, this straight gate, okay? You see, he's, gonna, he's refining us. You know, he's 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 hardening us. He's he's getting us ready so that we'll be able to endure and our minds will be built up. Like I said, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. You know, we'll be able to withstand this evil day when we see hey, the slain of the Lord shall be many. We're not gonna be we're not gonna shed a tear, man. We're not gonna cry, you know. We're not gonna cry. hey, we we warned him through the spirit of Yahweh Shimiao Shai. Yahweh Shimiao Shai warned him. So hey, we're not gonna care, man. We're not gonna be. We're not gonna. We're not gonna care, man. We gonna like the brother said. We are gonna have a cold spirit on us in them days, man. You see, and that's what this whole process is: refining us, hardening us. You know, getting out all them impurities, them emotions, them you know, the the things that may salaki that weaken you. You know, hey, the Lord said, "Gird up thy loins like a man. I will I will require it of thee." And that's what He's doing. He's hardening us. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Hey, because it's going to get nasty, man. It's going to get nasty. Through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom. All right? And we'll refine them as silver is refined. And we'll try them as gold is tried. He's going to test you. He's going to test you. And the greatest test is going to be that our temptation. When Esau Edom makes that RFID, RFID microchip 
per Revelation 13 and 16, the Karagma, the mark of the beast mandatory. And this is it, this day is drastically approaching. It's nigh. It says, they shall call on my name. See, the name of the Lord is important. It's a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Yahweh, why Yahweh shy? Them names are important. It says, they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord Yahweh is my power. That's the point. All right. So let's hit our Jeremiah 23. Um, and then I, I, I hit one more and I'll close out. Uh, the coming of the of the Messiah, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, okay, who is a so-called black man, a so-called Negro from the tribe of Judah who's coming back to redeem his people, all right, and only the elect of his people. Um, Jeremiah 23 and 1, woe, meaning destruction, you false pastors, man, teaching lies, man, all right, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Lord Yahweh, power of Israel, of Yasharala, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord Yahweh. And you're not going to escape. All you false teachers, you false prophets teaching lies, you're going to get yours. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. Because remember, we're a people before a place and the elect is scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. You got brothers all throughout the four corners of the earth sighing and crying for all the, all the abominations done therein. Okay? And I will gather the remnant. See, not all, the remnant, that righteous cluster. All right? And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increased. It's talking about the elect, the hopeful elect. Right? And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and shall and they shall fe fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord Yahweh. And we're in these days now. Our eyes have seen our teachers, man. And that's why we give double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and teach well. You know, and all the men that came before, you know, you know, because we've entered into other men's labors. Our eyes have seen our teachers. You know, we see, we, we heard the voice saying, this is the... The, the path walk ye in it, you know? So it says, Behold, the days come, Jeremiah 23 and 5, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, the tabernacle of David. He's building it as the days of old, man. New Jerusalem, you're seeing it right in front of your old, right in front of your eyes, man. You see? All the men out there sighing and crying for the abominations done therein, pushing this sound doctrine, okay? We're in these days. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is lifting up that standard, man. You know? It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And that's what we're waiting on. That righteous judge, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, to return. Okay? And that's what we're looking for. New heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. You know, and that day is nigh, it's quickly approaching. It says, In his days Judah shall be saved. And Israel shall dwell safely, northern and southern kingdom, okay? And this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord Yahweh, our righteousness, okay? Therefore, behold, the day, this is the main point that I wanted, Jeremiah 23 and 7, and it's also in Jeremiah 16 and 4, okay? But I'm in Jeremiah 23, okay? Jeremiah 23 and 6, in his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel, Yasharala, shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord Yahweh, our righteous, our righteousness. Okay. Therefore, behold, the day, and that's what we do. We exalt the Lord daily. You know, daily. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They get all the praise, honor, and glory. We're just servants, humble, lowly servants, man. Filthy worms. We're, we're, you know, you know. All our righteousness is as filthy rags, man. We deserve death, you know. Hey, this, it's by the tender mercy and grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that we even can do this, push this truth, man. You know, these are his words, his thoughts. His spirit is on us, the Rakak Wadash, you know. We're nothing without him, okay. You know, Yahweh Shai was the one worthy to open the seals, man. You know, he's our big brother, our intercessor, the go-between, you know. We're nothing without Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, man. And the Rakakwadash, man. You know, they get all the praise, honor, and glory. 
and by default we're joint heirs with Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? So it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that they shall no more say, The Lord Yahweh liveth, which brought up which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And that's talking about in, in uh, the actual Egypt, Africa, you know, you know, you know. But, 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 this is verse 28, verse 8. But the Lord Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed, okay, the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, which is right here in America, Babylon the Great, okay. And from all countries, you see that? And from all countries, whither I have driven them, because the main deliverance is going to be from Babylon the Great, but also we're scattered. Wherever the elect is scattered, whether it's Australia, Europe, Germany, Russia, the islands, you know, the Caribbean, south of wherever, okay? We all, the elect is going to be delivered, okay? You see? Because the remnant is scattered. You got believers all over. You got prophets all over. You see? That's how we know we're at the time of the end because the word has gone out. You see? And that's what I mean. That's the second exodus, okay? The main exodus and the main deliverance is right here from Babylon the Great, all right? So the Lord said, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, because every nation, everybody knows about our deliverance out of Egypt, man. All right. You know, but that's going to be uh, that, ain't, you know, that's going to be nothing compared to our, this deliverance as it is written. The strangeness of our salvation far beyond all that we look for. You know, is this he that we had sometime in derision? They're going to eat their words, man. They're going to eat their words, you know, and Yahweh Bashim Yashai is going to vindicate us, exalt us. You know, for exalting his name and his son's name and his word. Okay. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that they shall no more say the Lord Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel, Yasharala, out of the land of Egypt. But this is a future prophecy and this is quickly approaching. All right. Our redemption is nigh. Right. The Lord Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house. Hey, Zephaniah. Wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey. That's what we were waiting on, Yahweh Bashim Shai. And guess what? He said he's not going to meet you as a man. All right? Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Yahweh Bashim Shai is coming back to get busy. All right? To catch bodies. To catch wreck. Okay? So it would behoove you to repent. Okay? Seek the Lord. But the Lord Yahweh liveth with brought, which brought up and which led the seed, the seed of the house of Israel, Yasharala, out of the north country and from all countries whither I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. Like I said, the second exodus. Can't wait, baby. Can't wait. But um, I'm going to close out here. Um, uh, let me see. Straight to the point. Uh because, hey, like that, the point is all of Israel ain't going to make it. Like I said, it brought out in Zechariah, two-thirds are going to, I mean, two-thirds, of two parts are going to be cut off and die, man. All right? Only the elect, only the elect, the remnant is going to make it. Okay? And that's why it's important to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Seek the Lord while he may be found, man. Put on as the elect. You know? Fight that good fight of faith, man. We're close. You know, let no man take thy crown. No man, no woman, no job. No children, nothing, man. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? Be thou faithful unto death, and he shall give thee a crown of life. Okay? Romans 11 and 7, straight to the point. What then? Israel, Yasharala, hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. And what is, is, what is Yasharala seeking for? Salvation. All right? You know? You know? But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. All right, two thirds are covered in gross, gross darkness, man. You know, you know, they're covered in that Babylon juice, man. You know, according as it is written, Yahweh hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap. These scriptures, man, it's a snare and a trap, you know. Everything is, is, a, is a snare unto them. The men of the Lord, how, we, how we're lowly, meek, humble. It's all a snare and a trap for you. Because the Lord want to be justified in destroying you. A de and David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. 
Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back alway. You see? And that's the point. Two-thirds are going to die, man. Only the elect is going to be delivered out of this second exodus. The second exodus, uh, the, the, you know, chiefly the deliverance out of Babylon the Great, okay? Mystery Babylon, America, all right? So uh, I don't want to write this out. I was edifying, all right? Like I always say, man, keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep your eye on the prize. We're close. Shalom. Wa abad babal.